welcome to the 58th episode of the Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. So damn paranormal. Yeah. I'm your host, Jason Knight, <laughs> president and founder of Chicago's own Supernatural Occurrence Studies, and your host into the unknown. With me tonight is... Oscar Spector. And also... Dave Black. <laughs> Eerily absent tonight, still, uh, Mr. Joe Erie. Still really sick. Um, didn't want him coming over and recording and, and getting the whole house sick again. So Joe Erie is not with us this evening. But is he, he sends... heading towards recovery, though? I think he's heading towards the light. I don't last think he's doing he... too good. Was he sick last time, too? I really, was. I really wasn't opening so up for a joke. Ago. I'm really asking, is he going to get better? He yeah, he's, gonna, he's actually on the mend, but he's been around so many sick people lately. Mm. Like, his son's really sick. Everyone <laughs> at his work is sick. So he was like, dude, I don't know if you, I'll come over if you want me to, but I know you guys just got over being sick, so well, I don't know. One wanna... of his issues is. So he, I appreciate that. He, whenever he sees a doorknob, he has to put his whole mouth on it. <laughs> which is that a, is a big problem, yeah, I'd it's say. A weird, it's a weird habit of his. It's almost like fucked up in the head. It's really problem. fucked up, yeah, yeah. He mouths those things. Yes. And then, like, whenever he walks along, like, a railing at, like, a like a bus station, he just runs his tongue along the entire length of it. You think it would burn after, like, it would get dry after a while and burn, tongue burn. Well, he'll stop and, like, wet his lips. Oh, I mean, you got to wet your lips. Yeah. Speaking of, I'm wetting my lips on a nice Manhattan right now. I'm very excited about well, that. Well, you Don Draper? Like it looks like yes. your Manhattan no, is, not. like, 90% like grenadine cherry juice. No, dude. No, that's... You're no, seeing... You're, you're sure that's not a Shirley Temple you're drinking? No, no. <laughs> it is not. It is the uh, whiskey and the vermouth and the bitters that you're seeing, that lovely color. color. And I also have cherries crushed at the bottom with a little bit of sugar, like a real man. Yeah, I mean, that's totally Hatton. manly. Do you know what they do mm. to those cherries? Like, oh, dude, those it's cherries delicious. cherries are not even, like, they take those cherries and they they literally put them in lye to, like, bleach them. Like lye that you would throw on a body to decompose yeah. it? and they completely, like, destroy the integrity of the cherry. They, like, take away all the flavor, and then they pump it back full of, like, artificial color and flavor. Mm, delicious. Love that's it. That's why there's, like, green maraschino cherries and blue maraschino yeah, cherries. Yeah, I've seen that. Well... My Manhattan is that's red. Well, as listeners could tell, Dave Black is back. Black is back. Yep, that's right. I made that black. joke last time, I think. Welcome back. You did. You made that joke, and I, I chuckled. What happened? What was No, you laughed. You guffawed. Well, yeah. What did we... I, I did guffaw. Yeah. What did we say about it? You said... Uh, I say it was more of a chortle. But to Florida. I was about the Florida thing, Black Dave is back or something like that. I don't remember. Oh, did, yeah. you guys, did you guys do an episode when I was at town? Yeah, you should oh. listen the to the show The world does sometime. turn when you're not around. <laughs> I see. Exactly. So what welcome. The, what, what was the topic? Well, the topic. Well, if you listen, so, no, no, no. If you fucking listen to it, you'll find well, out. I didn't have a chance to listen to it. <laughs> well, it's I, it's free been, on every fucking phone you have well, out yeah, there. But I've been selling citrus. You can literally less, listen to it on the car while you sell citrus. Absolutely. I guess. Go find out. So it was. No, don't tell him. No, don't. All right. So we don't have a lot of time to really fuck around today with an intro, because the topic I chose. We're fucking around now. It really is. It's a deep, dark, scary hole. And I have a Where'd lot. Where'd you call me? <laughs> <laughs> Show me your deep, dark, scary hole. All right. I got a lot of content, of re- a lot of research I've done for this show. And uh, I just kind of want to jump right in it. All right, let's do it. Did want to welcome Dave back. Sorry Joe's not here. Sends his regards to all the listeners. But... Uh, was Joe of, here last time? He wasn't. He was really sick. So it was just you? He was sick. We, f- we fucking said that already. You were gone. I had a horrible week in New Jersey. Got back super late, so we have to release on schedule. Did you see the Jersey Double while you were in Jersey? I did not. I saw the Jersey Blizzard, the, the cyclone bomb. Oh. Took uh-huh. took me three planes to get there. Cause that sounds two, like a really te- bad Mardi Gras drink. Yeah, the cyclone bomb. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm making two, two of those cyclone bombs. Two, pl- two planes I tried to get there were decommissioned because they had mechanical issues. Hmm. Supposed to land in Jersey at 6.30. Didn't get there till 2 in the morning. I had no luggage. I was literally washing my socks and boxers in the sink with hand soap. Going to my corporate office, giving presentations in jeans and a t-shirt. Wore the same clothes for four days. It was horrible. But we have to release. Listeners expect the show. So we came up with something pretty cool all right. on the spot. But you got to listen to it. I won't, but all right. <laughs> Lisa's honest, folks. Lisa's honest. All right. Let's jump into this. Children's videos on YouTube. It's a humongous market. Channels featuring nursery rhymes, the unboxing of toys, channels dedicated to surprise egg videos. 
And these are videos where toys of all kinds are hidden in Easter eggs of all shapes and sizes. Then a pair of hands break open the eggs to reveal the toys inside. Channels dedicated to children playing with toys. All these type of, of, of content creators collect millions upon millions of subscribers per channel, totaling billions and billions of views. Lots of pedophiles, too. Well, we're going to get to that. And only God knows, really, how much the channel's creators collect in revenue. One channel creator, though, named Fun Toys Collector Disney Toys Review... It's or a just, really solid name. Well, well, th- this, this all spins, this, this gets deep. Or just Disney Collector. So Fun Toys Collector, Disney Toys Review, or just Disney Collector. Probably the most popular YouTube channel on the planet right now has just under 10 million subscribers and makes upwards, according to YouTube, of $21.8 million a year. That can't be possible, though. Like, if this, they have 10 million subscribers, this is making, verified. What, $3 per subscriber this a is, year? That this doesn't this make sense. This is verified by YouTube. Um, this no, it channel, doesn't make sense. It makes dollars. This channel makes that much money, 21.8 mil, according to YouTube, creating videos where a pair of beautifully manicured hands unboxes and plays with toys. That's it. That's all she does. You never see her face. You only see those hands... And you hear her soothing voice describing children's toys. See, now it's I crazy. Just wanna, I just want to put you in in my mindset right now. As a as a, I was a stand up comedian for years. Yeah. And I, as you know, I had a very dark sense of humor. Um, and I I, I quit doing stand up comedy in 2012. And I believe that if I were doing it today, I would get chastised for 90 percent of the act that I was doing. <laughs> Probably right. Um. But when you say this about like I've seen a couple of these videos where they're unboxing, Wait, but we're not oh, okay. unboxing the like you know the 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 egg toys with yeah the stupidest thing inside of yes. it and stuff and oh it's got little shoes and oh it's got a little thing and I'm like now I would do a parody video of somebody doing the same exact thing but opening it up and it's like there's like pieces of meat inside <laughs> of it and like like live rats and things like just like ridiculous nonsense like just slithering snakes coming out of it and stuff i'll bet you if you did it you'd make money yeah guaranteed but like that's my sense of humor is like it would be it would be this like horrifying thing where they'd be opening it up and horrifying things would be pouring out of it yeah so just keep that in mind like that's what's funny like that would be funny to me all right point taken noted um this so will, this will make sense later. This woman who makes twenty one point eight million a year, it, it's funny because it's been re- revealed recently that this mysterious millionaire is actually a Brazilian ex porn star, now living in Orlando, Florida, named how do you say it, Oscar? D a i a n e, Diane, Diane, Diane de Jesus, porn star named Sandy Summers. Yeah, Obviously, sounds like a, sounds like a very. Um, White, whiteified name. <laughs> Why well, gotta be whiteified? Obviously, the demand for children's content is out there on YouTube. So, what does YouTube do to shield our kids and adults doing the video lookup on YouTube for their kids? What does YouTube do to protect them from malicious, harmful content as they innocently look for family friendly videos? As it turns out, YouTube doesn't do much. And it's having dire consequences. Now, of course, kids are innocent. They see cute thumbnails on YouTube featuring their favorite characters, and they click on the video. Kids read silly video titles like Spider-Man Frozen Elsa Kiss or Frozen Elsa Huge Snot. And of course, these are actual titles. And of course, they click on the videos. They see words they recognize in video titles like Minions, Hulk, Joker, Spider-Man, Harley Quinn, Elsa, Disney, and of course, they click on the videos. Now, listeners may or may not know by this point, I do a ton of traveling for work. I have a very demanding job. It's a great job. I love my job. I travel a lot. Not according to last week's show. <laughs> yeah, well, last week, yeah, last week's Jersey nightmare. Uh, two weeks ago, Jersey nightmare. But you know, occasionally I get lucky and I get to work from home. And you know, when I tell people I work from home. They're like, oh, you're so lucky, dude. That's awesome. No, working from home sucks because I have tons of work that I have to complete. 
whether it's answering emails, jumping on conference calls, contacting clients, working on projects that have been handed down to me during, you know, throughout the week. I'm working. I'm working usually from 7.30 to about 5. I just don't have to brush my hair and teeth to do it. Um, I have children. Um, sometimes they're home with me when I'm working from home. Now the children have to be taken care of. If I got to jump on a conference call, I need quiet. I can't have kids screaming and playing in the background. So what do I do? I have a smart TV. I pop on YouTube's kids, and I just let YouTube play for a while. It sucks. It's part of life for me, for probably millions of working parents out there, uh, probably people listening to this show right now. You pop on YouTube, kids. It's vetted. It's safe. Let the videos roll. And my kids, you know, they love searching for videos on YouTube as well. If I don't pop it on, they'll jump on YouTube and search, you know, words like Anna, Elsa, Hulk, Spider-Man, Joker, Harley Quinn, Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, My Little Ponies. Innocent stuff. My nephew, too. There was one time when I was working from home and I did the YouTube babysitter thing. Got off my conference call and I walked in the front room. And I saw for, for the layman that does not live in Chicago, it would be the front room of the house or the living room Thank to you, most Dave. normal people that speak with, you know, normal words. Thank you. Um, so I had a real reality check this one particular afternoon. Now, most of the videos that we're going to talk about today um, start off innocent enough. They're silly. Uh, you see children's favorite characters doing mundane things. Elsa's cleaning a house. The Joker's raking leaves. They play games together. It's funny. But in all actuality, is this a well-orchestrated, subversive way to fool parents into walking away? Walking away from the TV, the smart device, the phone, whatever's playing YouTube kids, leaving their children alone with only a smart device and the videos create video creators' devious minds to watch over them. Honestly, I don't think most parents give it a th second thought than to just set it up and walk away after 15 seconds. I don't think they sit there and watch it to make sure what right. it is. Right, right. So as I said, the videos begin innocent enough, characters doing mundane things, but they suddenly turn dark. And this is what I walked in on. Male characters, you know, favorite children characters, abuse and pee on female characters. Elsa is pregnant and given birth in obvious excruciating pain. Peppa Pig drinks bleach. Characters shoot each other up with syringes filled with brightly colored fluid. And we'll talk about the use of color later. This is really important. Cartoon characters' teeth get ripped out at the dentist. Cartoon kids get their heads bashed and bloodied by beer bottles. This particular day, I walked into my kids watching baby Spider-Man and baby Elsa drinking beer together, which quickly turned into another video featuring cartoon kids drinking from water faucets, but on the other side of the wall, other cartoon kids were peeing in the water lines. So these unsuspecting cartoon kids were drinking piss. In the same video, in the same sitting, I saw another video, my kids right next to me. Elsa from Disney's Frozen was buried up to her head in sand with blood and shit on her head and an evil Venom, you know, the, the bad guy from the Spider-Man comics, standing over her. The kids thought it was hilarious. I was mortified. And in these videos, there's a lot of shit throwing and poo throwing and peeing on each other. And just as a side note... The women in these videos, the cheesy live-action videos that are put together, especially the Elsa character, they're hot. I mean, smoking fucking hot. Scantily clad, huge tits, pouty lips, blonde hair, blue eyes, perfect asses. Kids' videos. Characters remove each other's clothes. Never down to naked, but just about. My Little Ponies engage in sexual acts. Children receive painful shots in the butt. Parents take off on airplanes and leave behind their crying, hysterical children. In yet another video that I saw from a channel called Pranks Games, which thankfully has been taken down, Spider-Man and Catwoman fight on a bed, 
when all of a sudden Spider-Man reaches up and grabs uh, Catwoman's tits as she bites her lips seductively. This is on YouTube, kids. Catwoman continues to beat up on Spider-Man. Then she has a dance party over his unconscious body on the bed. When suddenly Spider-Man wakes up, fights back, and with a close-up, Catwoman kicks Spider-Man in the dick three times. Over 5.8 million views. Another video, which had over 7.8 million views, Elsa is so sick, her sister, Anna, has to take her temperature rectally. In another video, I got a lot of examples, folks. In another video, 20 million views features popular children's characters drinking at a dance party, and some of them wake up in bed together the next morning, and the video alludes that they're naked under the covers. With almost 10 million views by a YouTube channel called Toy Scouter, which is still in existence, a video featuring Elsa, she gets chloroformed and kidnapped, and an innocent Paw Patrol character gets stabbed, all with near total nudity and heightened violence. This is live action. Now, walking in on this and seeing my kids reacting the way they were, of course, me being the techie, concerned parent that I am, I jumped on Google and started YouTubing, uh, started Googling who's creating this YouTube content. Channels, what channels are they? Who are the creators? And these channels, by the way, have millions and millions of subscribers and literally billions of views. That's when I stumbled on today's topic, Elsa Gate. Now, it's called Elsa Gate because back in March 2016, the original block of nefarious videos that were brought to light, uh, which were featured on a, a web channel, a YouTube channel called Webs and Tiaras, showed front and center in all sorts of disturbing scenarios Elsa from the wildly popular Disney movie Frozen. Exposers combined the word Elsa, obviously from the original content containing the popular character, and gate, a noun that, when combined with another word, signifies an alleged or actual scandal, hence Elsa Gate. Now keep in mind, as we go through this episode, this is YouTube Kids we're talking about. It's the YouTube Kids app. Stuff that if you're a parent, you're listening, you probably have on your iPhones, iPads, Android devices, smart TVs, right now. And you're likely using them, just like I did. As a babysitter. YouTube Kids and the YouTube Kids app are supposedly, according to YouTube, monitored and vetted by a complex, proprietary, secret YouTube algorithm designed to keep our kids safe. If you thought that was bad, it gets even worse. Other YouTube channels feature real kids in sickening situations. This time, not just cartoons and poorly costumed actors take for example the now defunct youtube channel toy freaks which at one time had over eight and a half million subscribers toy freaks was run by a real scumbag a man named greg chisholm or freak daddy as he calls himself from granite city granite city illinois an illinoisian this is a father that videotaped and uploaded to his channel him pretending to abuse his two young daughters. He filmed them taking showers together, albeit in bathing suits, but still. He would force-feed them baby food until they puked, and he even videotaped them peeing on themselves. And he'd upload them to his channel. Millions and millions and millions of subscribers. There's even thumbnails on, on this guy's past channel showing his daughters sucking on pacifiers with bruised, blackened eyes, like someone beat the shit out of them. Even though Toy Freak was taken down, the channel's back and has almost a thousand subscribers and counting. No one really knows if Chisholm's behind the new channel or not. Is the title the same? It is. It's titled the same. What's it called again? Um, uh, Toy Freaks. Um, are we going to put some of these names uh, of these channels that we're talking about on the show notes? I don't for people know. to know. I don't know because... I don't know if you want to like, advertise. Exactly. Well, it's attention. not advertised. We're already talking about it. It's already advertised. I'm but, not sure. I'm not, it's a good question. I'm not sure yet. Right. For like, so, to know, you know. Just, not like for a bad reason. No, you know, not for a good reason. I mean, for a good reason, not for a bad reason. 
Right. right. We, I, we, I just don't want to bring any more attention, like, so people go and search and look and like. And well, that's right. No one reads show, that show notes unless we tell them specifically. <laughs> before, we get too, <laughs> so. before we get too deep into this show, I just want to say some of the things you were describing um, as being seen in these videos and stuff really um, are not that much more nefarious than standard issue, like, Tom and Jerry episodes or Warner Brothers cartoons. Hmm. So, okay. I mean, Tom and Jerry, you know, the cat was getting hit in the face with frying pans and getting set on fire and like all sorts of crazy. Yeah, but it's also a little there different from whole, there what was the that, southern one, what's it called? That that old uh, Disney movie? Song of the South. Song of the South. There yeah. You go. Yeah, there was the Tar Baby. There was the whole uh, Bugs Bunny with the bull thing where he took a wrong turn in Albuquerque, he wound up in a, a bullfighter ring and like mm. set the bull on fire and blew him up a bunch of times and like all kinds of crazy stuff. Like cartoons are violent or were violent. Mm. Like when we were growing up, cartoons were fucking crazy. Like they were crazy violent. I, I definitely understand what you're saying. I think that the medium you're talking about was it's this wide open medium where you know, uh, parents could easily click off a, a television show, but this the thing sit is and like watch with the children explain. Now this isn't real. Back then, parents didn't the, think twice about letting their kids watch Tom and Jerry. You know, they didn't think twice about letting their kids watch. You know, Elmer Fudd and Donald. Uh, or, uh, no, my my parents did, my parents didn't like that. I that I, they they banned me from watching The Simpsons. But because well, uh, your parents are retarded. <laughs> Well, uh, point taken. <laughs> um, but again, this, the see, I don't want to spoil what's I mean, I coming ahead. It. You know what I mean? No, I know. I, 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 know I where, understand I, your I point. Know, I know where we're I going just don't think I, there's no I'm correlation. To, I think I, with what I'm he's saying. I'm just trying to put it in perspective. Of it's not the same though. I know it's not the same, but at the at, same at time, all. cartoons that we grew up on, especially me and Jay. I mean, you're like a generation behind us, Oscar. But me and Jay, we grew up in. You know, we we were born in the in the mid '70s, so we grew up watching cartoons in the '80s and stuff. A lot of which were remnants from the '60s and '70s, um, and these old Tom and Jerry episodes from like the late '60s, and early those. '70s were yeah. were pretty pretty crazy. They were pretty crazy. Yeah, there was violent. there was some messed up stuff. There was like I remember some cartoons that we watched then. You can't even find them anymore. They were completely right. pulled and and banned. But um, you know, there was. You but know, you, like, I mean, the 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 rabbit season, duck season thing is is cartoon characters literally shooting each other in the face and disfiguring. Yeah, but the difference other. between that and this is that in this one, that that scenario will play out that the blood and the guts will come out, and they won't be like a cartoony duck face turning around in circles. Right. That's but, the point. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to give away going what's coming forward. Well, but then don't. You got to understand the the platform we're talking about. This is a platform hosted by a billion dollar company, YouTube, and you that YouTube promises is safe for children. It's severely vetted. There's special algorithms. Um, it's completely safe. Let your kids watch. But yet something's happening, and somehow these things are slipping by supposedly unknown to YouTube. And and again, it gets deeper, and I just don't want to ruin everything. Well, I mean, it's the thing is, on the Internet nowadays, there's so many scam artists out there. There's so many crazy things. I mean, how many emails do you get a day that are like, oh, Constant Contact wants you to update your information, or PayPal, list that, or the other thing, or your, you know, Squarespace, or whatever. Like, And, it, and sometimes it's like, Oh, you know, the Bank of America wants you to log in and you know, f you know, fix your information. Right, yeah, or phishing like, scam. Yeah, you know, like, I don't have a Bank of America account, but there's so many scammers out there that they just throw as much shit at the wall as they possibly can. They send out a million of these messages a day, you know, just using some you know algorithm or whatever, or or some system that just sends out mass emails to whatever. Or makes these, you know, how many times a day do you get like phone calls from? This is the credit card services department. Like, okay, so but so there's all these so, scammers but, out there. But what is just, your what is your point? These videos don't exist. They're not no, nefarious. Point, there isn't. No, a, my point is that the con. I don't think the content 
of the videos makes a difference. Like, I don't think that they're specifically trying to put out disturbing content. I think what it oh, is... Oh, I absolutely do. ...is they're just throwing whatever... They're just throwing together whatever bullshit videos they can to generate ad re- revenue and just throwing out as many of them as possible and don't really care what's in them. And that... But who vets it? No, we got we to move they, on. We got to move on. But they have ways to use the tags and stuff... And to get around all that stuff, like that's what it is. Like, I mean, how many YouTubers just monetize YouTube by using tags? I'm not. I, I we got to move on because I'm going to get into a conversation. I'm going to ruin stuff for later. I want the exper- the listeners to experience the story because I have I have counterpoints to everything you're saying. I just don't want to reveal them yet. Right. Um, but I mean, you you get where I'm coming from here. Like, there's a lot of nonsense out there on the internet. All right. So. As I was saying, this channel with Chisholm is back. They're gaining subscribers once again. No telling if Chisholm is actually behind this new channel. All right. Now, some of these videos that are in question, these Elsa Gate videos, um, they have fun little thumbnails. And you've got to remember, this is easy clickbait for kids. These thumbnails will have smiling Disney or Marvel characters. Problem is, an unsuspecting child or parent clicks on a cute thumbnail... And the video might be kid-friendly, but what do kids do? They watch and watch, sometimes for hours, when suddenly up pops thumbnails of Elsa crying because huge nails are driven through her fingers and her feet, and she's dripping blood. Or another thumbnail might pop up with Spider-Man upside down, drowning in a toilet, or one with Spider-Man with thumbtacks in his ass, again, just pouring blood. And I saw another with the screaming and crying Paw Patrol characters. Now, names of these channels are are really clever. Uh, um, And we're going to see that here in a bit. Getting into what Dave's talking about with tagging, expert tagging to fool the vetting algorithms. Um, Name just some of the channels uh, that host and contain what we're calling Elsagate material. There are literally thousands. One channel gets deleted, two more pop up. Some of these channels are still active. Some are taken down. Listeners could search this list for themselves. I'm not going to say which is which and promote this shit. But some of the channels, Webs and Tiaras, the original one that I mentioned earlier. Toy Scouter, Toy Monster, Toy Baby, Toy Freaks, Toy Family, Kids Superheroes Real Life Videos, Good Baby Toys, Elsa and Spider-Man Compilations and Kids Funville Toys and Games. That's one title. That's tagging happening. I get that, yeah. what you're saying. That's actual, that, that is tagging, trying to circumvent the, the algorithms. Now, here's some of the video titles. Minions, baby, Minions, Banana, Baby, Drink, Piss, Water, Finger, Family, Song, Nursery Rhyme. Let me try that again. Minions, Banana, Baby, Drink, Piss, Water, Finger, Family, Song, Nursery Rhyme. Now, remember, finger, if you have kids, Finger, Family, it's an insanely popular kid song. My kids sing it. Daddy finger, daddy finger, where are you? Right, Here yeah. I am. We all know Here that. I, I mean, I know that. I have a nephew. But yeah. How do you do? Right? Mm-hmm. So they're making, they're making, they're taking advantage of the popularity of Finger Family and working its tags into other mm-hmm. nefarious right. videos. Right? Uh, another video title, Frozen Elsa Makes Poop in Dress Devil vs. Frozen Elsa and Spider-Man Children's Videos. That's the title of a video. Joker vs. Frozen Elsa cut finger prank Elsa Spider-Man superhero kid movie in real life 4K. Hmm. That's one title. Mm -hmm. Expert tagging. And uh, Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse love story with Mickey Mouse P on the Minnie Mouse. Okay. He's also very, like, like Asian, like... (laughs) Yeah, and I'm going to... Poorly g- translated Asian title. Yes. Now, some common things with... This is common themes with these videos. Titles are usually long, like we just seen, using expert keywords like Dave mentioned, and countless perfectly honed tags, all designed to trick YouTube's algorithms and people by using highly searched terms and phrases. Videos are typically long, too, and they usually have no talking making them appeal to a worldwide worldwide audience because there is no language barrier. Right. Also, with no no talking, there's no words for them to pick up on and weed out. True. Now, some that I saw do talk very, I mean, we're talking half sentences. 
Right. Um, but when they do talk, it's it's in some vague, weird, not quite English or American dialect. Couple no language barrier with expert tagging and titles, and you have to admit, it's diabolically brilliant. And for the most part, it's not adults searching for this softcore porn cartoons, if you will. Adults search for something innocent and give their kids an iPad. Then, boom, 30 minutes later, kids are watching Elsa getting beaten up and peed on. Parents must take an active role and understand and supervise what their kids are watching on YouTube. If only one parent listening to this podcast today decides to take away the iPad or refuses to let their four-year-old watch YouTube unsupervised, then we've done our job, guys. Now, I want to get back to March 2016 with Webs and Tiaras, the originator, supposedly, of the ElsaGate content. In just two months from when the channel went live, Webs and Tiaras became the third most popular YouTube channel in the world, racking up over 1.7 billion views. I don't even understand. What is the Webs part? Spider-Man. Webs yeah. and tiaras. Web, spiders, uh, webs and crowns. Soon after, of course, copycat channels popped up. Toy Monster, Kids Club, and The Superhero's Life, totaling more billions of views. Think for a moment how popular the movie Frozen was. Then imagine all the people the world over searching the internet and YouTube kids for Frozen songs, Frozen videos, and images and videos of the movie's main characters. These mysterious, mysterious content creators, whoever they are or whatever they are, saw the popularity of Frozen and began taking advantage of the key words and phrases being used to search for innocent content and in turn found a way to inject their own subversive content while bypassing YouTube Kids content filters. Effectively getting their highly questionable content in front of billions upon billions of young unsuspecting, vulnerable, susceptible eyes. Now, this all came to light almost two years ago, and thankfully a lot of the original creators and channels have been removed from YouTube. In fact, YouTube announced on November 27, 2017, it had in fact terminated 270 accounts, removed 150,000 videos, and removed the ads from almost 2 million videos and 50,000 channels masquerading as child-friendly content. While researching this episode, of course, I watched a few videos that I mentioned to see how much of this garbage was still out there. And it is still out there. One video I watched called Frozen Elsa and, F- and Spider-Man Find a Treasure, which had uh, 833,775 views on YouTube channel called Superheroes IRL, featured Spider-Man, Elsa, and the Joker. The video started out innocently enough, like they usually do, with Spider-Man and Elsa raking leaves, doing yard work, when suddenly the Joker shows up, suggestively wielding a leaf blower and proceeds to bury a terrified Elsa in leaves. Meanwhile, Spider-Man finds a treasure box filled with pearl necklaces, which he gave to Elsa. Adults are laughing at that one, pearl necklaces. Later in the video, Spider-Man's sitting on a toilet, farting loudly, when suddenly Elsa shows up in the bathroom and is clearly embarrassed by what Spider-Man's doing. Later in the same video, the choker attempts to barbecue a live, an actual baby duck, and the video ends with Spider-Man and Elsa cuddling together in a hot tub with the baby duck swimming around him. Another video I watched was called Number 11, Frozen Elsa Bashing Giant Easter Egg Challenge with Bell Spider-Man Fun Video. It's a mouthful. Happy good time, fun kitty cat. <laughs> Tentacle. From the same Superheroes IRL channel. In this one, Spider-Man... Blue gives... Jeans America, good time. <laughs> In this number 11 Frozen Elsa video, Spider-Man gives Elsa and Belle a massive chocolate Easter egg and demands that they destroy it. They destroy it. Spider-Man gives them a plastic sword, a wooden baseball bat, boxing gloves, and a toy bow and arrow to do the deed. Of course, the plastic toys don't work, so Belle and Elsa break out the baseball bat and the boxing gloves, and aggressively destroy the egg with pure ecstasy on their faces. On their faces. This video had almost 89,000 views. I stumbled upon a channel called Super Hermes TV, featuring kid-friendly videos like 
Paw Patrol babies crying in prison caught stealing. And Paw Patrol babies pretend to die by suicide. Most thumbnails in this channel feature terrified-looking, teary-eyed Paw Patrol characters in some sort of dangerous situation. Now, of course, I had to look up the word Hermes, and interestingly, in Greek mythology, Hermes was the son of Zeus and the second youngest of the Olympian gods. Hermes was the divine trickster, the god of boundaries and the transgressor of boundaries, and the patron of herdsmen, thieves, graves, and heralds. Many scholars believe Hermes originated from the god Pan, who has the legs, hindquarters, and horns of a goat and head of a torso and a man, kind of like a fawn or a satyr. And he's connected fertility, connected to fertility, sexual powers, and is often depicted with a large penis. Why, Dave, is there a kid's channel called Super Hermes TV? Is this a hidden in plain view, a plain view thing? Is the channel creator trying to tell us something? I honestly don't think there's that much thought going into these things. Okay. I, I, I think that it's just garbage nonsense being like put together... The, they probably just have somebody throw, slapping together videos to pump as many of them out there as possible to try and generate these ad, this ad revenue. And who knows? They could have like some 13 year old kid putting these things together in Bangladesh or whatever. Just like you, you commissioned somebody to put together animations for our website right, that was yeah. in the Philippines or whatever. So they're probably, they're probably outsourcing the content to whoever and the, the, whoever doesn't, they, they just give them a bunch of tags. They're just like throw. They're probably just like just put Elsa and Spider Man and the, the Joker in it, and the and the person who's who's putting it together is like, well, what do you want me to make them do? Like whatever, I don't care, just whatever. I don't think that's uh, the whatever part there. I don't think that's part's true necessarily. There is a certain um, certain style to making something where kids will watch and rewatch and rewatch right, and rewatch. For, and usually for, the, the twinkle of the, the music, which is nice toy boxy right, thing. Right, but for every one of these like no crazy, dialogue. crazy nefarious videos where people are getting peed on or pooped on or whatever, it's just a, it's just probably a simple, hundred that are just No, it's a simple program with the sim same background, right. but they just add certain things in different ways and right. that's it. But, I'm, I'm, but they I'm all have a structure. For every one of those that yeah. has scatological stuff or, or crazy violence or whatever, there's probably a hundred that are completely in Innocuous That's the whole point. It is buried in the like right. shopping or whatever. Right. So I th I don't think exactly. it's just like remember when, no one's saying that they're all like that. Uh, this is the thing is remember when there was all that um, stuff about Acorn. Remember the 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 voting thing. Acorn. I think talking about Acorn, the rapper. No, Acorn was this group that uh, that went out and signed people up with voter registrations to get to get people to to register to vote. So what was happening is Acorn got shut down and there was this big scandal because some of the voter registrations came back with names like Mickey Mouse and Arnold Schwarzenegger and like people were just using fictional names mm -hmm. on them. And they're like, oh, they're trying to like, you know, they're trying to like, f like voter fraud and they're trying to like, you okay. know, and, and there was this big scandal that people were, that they were like, tr they thought what was happening was that like what conservatives tried to make it sound like is that they were registering these fake people and then these fake people were coming in to vote and place fraudulent votes. But that's not what was happening. What this company was doing, what this non-for-profit was doing, was hiring teenage kids after, after they got out of school and high school to go out and sign people up to register to vote. So they give them these slips, go out and get X amount of these filled out or you don't get paid. So what do they do when they can't get people to fill out the voter registrations? They just start stuffing the box with nonsense. The same thing happened to me. I worked at a at a uh, at a telemarketing place when I was in my twenties, early twenties, and you know they gave us call lists. You you call, you know the computer generates these calls, these numbers, and you talk to the people and you try to sell them the Sunday Sun Times. That was what my job was, and then people, you know, sometimes people would get it. Sometimes people would say no, and you click no, and their number goes away forever. But occasionally, what would happen is they'd give us the same call lists for the same areas, and the same numbers would keep popping up. And eventually, what would happen is it would get whittled down to people that just said no and got dropped off the list, um, or people that just never answered their phone. So you'd sit through an entire shift of the phone ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing. And you're like, well, they're never going to be able to verify this anyways. So I'm just going to start signing up some of these people that are answering their phone. Because 
Then a second step of somebody has to call and verify, get their information, this, that, and the other thing. So that's why I got fired from that job is because they kept giving us these shit call lists that kept generating the same bullshit numbers that nobody ever picked up. So I'm just you just fill them out and be like, all right, here's a, here's the sale that to make my quota because you won't give me a fresh call list to use so okay. I can actually talk to people. What, what's the point? What are you so trying to say? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm completely missing it So my point, because these are two different things we're talking about. My, my point is that I don't think I, – I, I think what's happening here is they're literally just putting out as much content as possible without even thinking to about make, what To make money, is. right? To make money, yeah. So what they're doing is they're contracting or hiring out whoever to put these videos together and make it, and then they put it online. And the thing is that I don't even think whoever's controlling the channels or uploading this stuff even looks at the videos that they're posting. I, they I probably get so completely disagree. They get so completely many. Completely disagree. So horribly completely disagree. You cannot I, compare that. I, 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 I'm, Apples to oranges I hear on that your one. Point and your point. It. it it does sound valid at its surface, but once you really let me finish, once you really start researching these videos and really start reading into this stuff, reading about this stuff, there are common themes that every single one of these videos has. I'm just going to first touch on color. Color is going to play a huge part when we start talking about conspiracy theory behind this. Color aside, there's there's deep rooted Freudian topics in every single one of these right. videos and whether I, it's you're I, not letting me finish I agree with that part. you're not letting me finish so it's not random the 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 themes in these videos again they're freudian they're 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 our most primal um there there's for kids right there's sex there's violence there's scatological poo and pee kids are obsessed with that shit there's abandonment there's getting hit in the head, suffering damage. There's fear of the mouth. There's fear from dentists, um, fear of being hurt by a, a role model. These are all deep-rooted, subconscious, Freudian themes that cycle throughout all of these Elsagate videos, not to mention color programming with the same colors that come up and repeat and play over again and again, almost hypnotically, it is definitely not random. Right, and I understand that, but think of like the Teletubbies. Remember, you ever watch uh, the Teletubbies but, <laughs> as an adult and you're like, what read, the fuck read is about going on right Teletubbies now? Teletubbies ties into this. It's programming I at a young age. But this is the thing, is they take the colors and they take the themes and they, take, they, they have this list. They basically just have a checklist and they give it to whoever makes the videos and they tell them, hey, make this video with these elements to it. Right. So who is that So whatever. who is that governing body that is telling these mysterious creators to inject these deep rooted uh, subliminal messaging? I would not, that is nefarious. I that would not, is I would not be a conspiracy. I would not be surprised if these uh, the people making these videos are children. Are teenage children or preteen children in in India or Japan or whatever that are making these videos, and they're making them with these elements from the perspective of an eleven or twelve year old with the scatological stuff and all the stuff. Um, did you? I mean, have you heard about the? Like, I'm sure you've heard about how the Russians attacked Facebook with all these fake stories and sure. stuff to influence the election. All right, so. Um, there is you. You can actually look this up. There's uh, there's this whole town in Macedonia, all right, Macedonia and Eastern Europe, um, and there's these teenagers that put together articles um, geared primarily towards conservatives. Um, Hillary Clinton caught murdering, you know, uh, body found in her yard. Or Pizza like, Gate, yeah, yeah Pizza all that Gate, stuff. All these like crazy conspiracy theories, and they put it out on Facebook through legitimate seeming sites, patriot.us.com sure. or whatever, and people share it, and they make millions and millions in ad revenue from creating these fake stories. And people have actually gone to Macedonia and talked to these people and be like, do you realize you're like literally 
destroying America and putting people's lives in danger. And they're like, we don't care. You're making we, money. We, we just get, we just know what people are going to share. We know if we say it's Hillary did something wrong and Hillary did this and Hillary did that, if we just include their names in it in some sort of negative spin, people will share it without ever checking to see if it's real or not. How does that make what you're what we're talking about like what are you talking about? How does that relate to what we're talking because about? Because it's the same type of thing. It's not because it's the same type of thing that they it follows a formula that they know is going to be shared, that they know is going to be watched, that they know is going to be looked at. Yeah, but the same thing can be applied to wholesome people, not as and they gruesome put it things. Out there. But you have to understand, go ahead Oscar. Well, no, I mean, well, kids well, follow that. Oscar, kids follow point, that. What's that finger song called? Oh, um Finger Family. Think of it. I've seen it in 3,000 different ways from my nephew. 3,000 different scenarios and backgrounds and voices and stuff. Same fucking song. Finger it's really Family annoying. It sounds like a porn title. <laughs> I know it does. <laughs> what I'm saying is that that works just as gangbusters as this other violent stuff that could be working. And that they is don't have to do that. Excellent, but that's my excellent p- point. My point that's is not a I, point. Don't, I don't think yeah. that they're in, like. Literally what they're doing, they're creating hundreds and thousands of these videos, right? Millions. Millions of these videos, of just nonsense videos. But they're not nonsense. But this is the thing. That's the problem. They have, they, they're like, okay, somebody, whoever, whoever's posting these things or whoever's buying the content is going to programmers or creators and saying, we need these five elements in this video. It needs to be this many, many seconds long. Put it together. And they just slap it together and give it to them, and they put it. No up. one they slaps together shitting on people. No, absolutely not. Or what the, these, or but these that's the thing, common, uh, uh, primal, primal things. Right. If you asked, if you wanted to put together a video, like a silly cartoon video, right, and you talk to a twelve-year-old kid in Bangladesh who all he does is crank out videos all day long. But that kid, be like, hey, that I want you to throw together a video with me. It has to have Elsa in it. It has to have Spider-Man in it. It has to be prominently featured the colors red, blue, and purple. And they're see, I think you're 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 defending of this uh, point that's so ridiculous that there is uh, something behind it. It's also ridiculous because you'd have to make sure that everyone's doing it that way for that reason. No one's going to slap on these horrible things. What all I'm together is, for no is, nonchalant reason. Exactly. What I'm saying is... When they could make just as much money right. pirating Elsa yeah, but if baking a cake or but, something. But think of it Think of it as, like, from the perspective... Like, honestly, a lot of these... The people that are putting together these videos are probably kids. They're probably 12-year-old kids I disagree. using That's using your point. Program. I, I, don't, I don't think so. About the videos either. aren't... No. It's not like they're well done. And we like, have to remember the platform that they're being released on. This is... A billion dollar company putting out kids videos on a supposedly friendly, safe and in four, platform. And in 4K, by the way. I read about that. Yeah. All and they're, are so, and 4K. they're being hoodwinked. Okay. Either, for, for my but, business, for my, my produce company, I go out in the woods to collect wild ramps, okay, wild onions. Now, I'll, I bring out a bunch of people with me. I bring out four or five people with me. Some of them are people that I haven't worked with very often, and I show them how to do it and how I expect it to be done. You want to take the, the onion out of the ground, you knock off the roots, you let it sit in a pile for a while while you're picking other stuff, let the roots dry out a little bit, come back, knock them off again, place them in the bag, all facing this one direction, because they have to look nice because that's how they're going to the restaurants. I don't want them to be shitty. But people are like, oh, well, you're not going to check every fucking bag, so I don't care. I'm not going to be around when you sell them, so I'm just going to fucking dig up clumps. But you of dirt, check some bags, right? Bag. You check some of them, right? Yeah, you check. That's some the of some them, of them we're talking about. But you don't check all of them. Right. If you have millions of videos to sift through, you're not going to look through every single one. But YouTube promises that those videos are all going to be looked at on the family-friendly platform. But they don't. They, they, I'm not even talking so about that. YouTube. Is, that and there about, is, but that's what we're talking about. That right there is malfeasance. That is, that is a serious. Glaring hole I don't know how you're platform. defending that point. When, I don't understand. And see, I'm getting ahead here, but when right, we here. start talking about adpocalypse soon, if someone simply mentions abortion, they get hammer put down on them, uh, and they're demonetized. Someone lets the N-word slip. Someone who has, uh, it's later in my notes here, 20 million subscribers, they let one word slip, and suddenly the world is over. Yet you have these nefarious videos with these deviant themes circulating for years underneath YouTube's radar, 
it's bullshit. There is no way possible. If someone, if you, if you go on YouTube and you start talking about all your political shit, you will not be able to make a dime. You'd be lucky if they didn't cancel your channel. But right. yet, whoever is creating these videos, however, uh, whatever is creating these videos, are still allowed to roll today. You can look it up right now. And also, and you're missing the bigger point, money. which is that people are making money off these videos that shouldn't be up. That's the real main point here, not the whys of it. Yeah. But the, they're doing it with an algorithm. They probably like there's there's programs you can you can basically just upload. You can go on to a video, any video page on the internet or any web page. People used to do this with their websites all the time. They'd open up some out thing that just basically refreshes the page over and over and over again open up 50 page you know 50 tabs on their laptop with it running on each one so they can click on their website and just leave it running all well, day the, long the numbers, and they're getting the numbers that getting I'm all quoting, the numbers up on their website the numbers that I'm quoting are are from YouTube I'm I'm sure YouTube has a way to tell fake versus real organic but I, I hear some of these videos have 300 million views 1.2 She's making this. No this way. woman's making 21.8 million dollars a year. It's possible. Yeah, kids but we, those videos kids are we like watch something videos. over and over and That's over right. again. Kids okay, don't here, know anybody. I saw the let's, mask a trillion times right, as a kid. Let's 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 do this scenario. Let's say you did a two-hour interview with somebody. You were out of town and you met some famous paranormal guy, and you did a two-hour video with him. Or a two-hour, um, two-hour interview with him on your 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 uh, task cam. Okay, now you want Oscar to make it into an episode, right? Definitely. Now let's just say for thirty seconds in that interview, you just sang a Hall and Oates song, just randomly. You're okay. just like, "Hey, I can't go for that." Whoa, no can do. <laughs> like, say an hour and twenty-seven minutes in, you just decided to sing a Hall and Oates song. Do you think that Oscar would listen to the entire episode and catch that and cut it out? Or do you think it would wind up? What, what do you think the chances are that it would wind up in the episode? Are you uh, putting my quality in my, in my I know, fucking... I'm afraid to answer. If it was a two-hour recording No, you answer honestly, thing, but I'm saying. In one hour and 27 minutes, you decided to sing 30 seconds worth of a Hall & Oates song. Do you think it would wind up in the episode? Uh, Probably. So but, there you but Oscar that, that, isn't a billion dollar corporation with billions of dollars worth of R and D uh, uh, money uh, available to him to create algorithms that vet that stuff. You know what I do when I have like a box of mushrooms that has been sitting around for a week in the cooler and it's what? not it, and it's going pretty bad. What the restaurant that ordered eight cases? It's going to slip in there at number three or four. And by the time they okay. even get to it, they're not going to be able to complain about it. They're going to be like, oh, I guess we let this one sit too long or whatever. And uh, just to note, I would catch that. Thank you. <laughs> well, I probably would ask him if he wants it in there. Whatever or whoever is behind this video, these videos, this Elsagate thing, one thing, in my opinion, is certain. And this is my opinion. It's a nefarious group on a massive scale which are attempting to normalize deviant behavior. And tell our kids, hey, Disney might not show you this stuff, but look what Anna and Elsa do in their free time. It's okay. You could do it too. But what, what, Don't you want to be like them? What's the purpose? What's the end goal? Well, oh, that's the whole point. No, a cons- no a one good really conspir- knows. A good, a good conspiracy has to have a clear, clear and present like purpose. Well, it, like, here's why? the thing. Hey, Disney, you know, Disney might not show you this stuff. Look what Anna and Elsa could do. Don't you want to be like them? Personally... I think the message they're getting across is a lot worse than that. But the problem is the kids are just too young and the Elsa Gate conspiracy too new to tell what harm it's really causing. This is the thing, I though, personally like, think... The things you're describing in these videos are no different than what kids can see on TV any day of the week. You know, you can turn on the news and see shit like that. You can turn on fucking mm. Donald Trump speaking and hear him <laughs> say shithole and th- th- hear the news talking about him fucking yes, a, a porn yes star. Yes, and no, but like, kids remember a video that they like to see. They're like, I remember some guy talking. Yeah, plus the TV news, parents have a sole responsibility to vet it, and it's easy to do. Again, we're going back to what YouTube is promising the world. This platform is safe for your kids, and it's not, and that's a problem. And no one knows truly what the message but, is supposed but, to well, mean. Well, this is this is the thing with with these conspiracies. There there needs to be a clear and present like 
why is this a conspiracy? Like, why wouldn't the government, like, okay, so... The yeah, but flat, J- the, like flat earth. JFK is a rampant conspiracy that'll never go away. No one knows for sure why it was done, but it's right. still a conspiracy. This but is the same thing. Flat earthers, okay. Except our kids are the target. Flat earthers. And why would kids be a target? Because they're young the and malleable. With, the thing with JFK, though, there's plenty of reasons why he would have been killed because he was going after the mob, because he was going but after no the banks. Knows. Like, no one knows for like sure. Legi- there, but there's like legitimate, oh, I can see that. Like I can see why the mob would want him dead. I can see why the well, there, want there's him dead. theories here too, but I'm but, not but, giving them away yet. But this is this is my thing is like with Do the you just fl- want to negate every point we make. No, but with like the flat earthers, I think flat earthers, flat earthers, they're like, oh well, the Earth is flat, and NASA's lying to us, and you're like, well, why? Well, because they make money off of saying the Earth is round. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? How does saying the Earth is round make anyone money? What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, but in this case, YouTube is making money, and they're making a lot of money, 45% revenue share. The worst part about it revenue. is that, David, is that they would make money if they never did any of this bad or shit. And that's what makes me think, Oscar. You're, ab- that, you're on, so, you're on vibe YouTube with me. Is, I don't think YouTube is consciously doing this, though. I'm not saying YouTube is doing it, but YouTube YouTube's is allowing it. YouTube's making billion dollars off of, or whatever, how many hundreds of millions of dollars off of these ad revenues. You think they don't know? They know. That's the problem. They know. They're making the money. I don't see how they but cannot know. Any, any, they're making the money off this, but you can't go in and talk about your political Facebook right-wingness. Facebook and Twitter make millions of dollars off of white supremacist groups. But Facebook stuff. and but Twitter do not promise safety for your children. No, but they no, have they don't. community standards. And YouTube. Do- they com- have community standards. Community if standards. Donald, if, they have rules and, and if, regulations, if but they don't Trump, have a platform specifically for yeah. families. If Donald Trump was the average person, he would have been banned from Twitter five years ago. I doubt it. No, I doubt, I doubt it. it. Twitter is why Twitter is yeah, no, the only no, no. place that uh, porn stars going to have a Twitter account. That's the only place they can advertise their stuff because they don't care. It's an adult thing. People only search for each other thing there. When there's something bad happens controversially on Twitter, other tweeters bring that guy out of hiding and s- shut him down. Not Twitter itself. Right. It's right. always been the case that way. And YouTube. Remember those two white girls? Those two white girls that said the N-word when they were in the cotton fields that they were feeling like all this stuff? Remember that? They were shut down by other uh, tweeters, not Twitter. And then through them, they got shut down. And they got in trouble. They got fired and all that. But it wasn't like – they still had a Twitter account, I think. So, you know, it wasn't like – My point is – Your point is that you don't think there's anything here, and I think there is. No, my point is is any money-making, money-grab thing on the internet – is literally some somebody just throwing as much shit at the wall as possible to see what sticks. Well, Spider-Man and is literally know. throwing shit at the wall. Yeah, and our kids are watching this stuff. <sighs> Regardless, it's again, like the fucking Tide Pods. Thing. There, there are. Nobody's really eating Tide Pods. It's a fucking running joke. You're, some you're, fucking kid ate. Uh, trust me, ate some. Yeah, from watching those videos. Probably, I, remember, I saw that fake uh, 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 Tide Pod Frappuccino. Did you see that one? No, that was really funny. But uh, I had a, a leaky, um, I had a leaky hot water heater down here uh, last year, and so I had a little tin underneath, kind of collecting the water. One day I went to go change the tin, and I'm like, "Is that a fucking jellyfish? What's in this tin?" So I put my hand in this tin, and literally my whole hand was filled with gloop. And I put my my nose to it, and I'm like, well, "I was, I thought, is this some?" chemical from the hot water heater what is this and i smelled it it was tied my son nico four years old three years old last year Mm -hmm. took a handful just a massive amount of tide pods Mm -hmm. and put it in the water just to see what they would do but he was smart enough not to eat it three years old you know now to dave's point there is there is conclusions to this conspiracy you're saying it can't be a conspiracy without an end result there are end results here i'm just not releasing them yet there are end results, what people think are happening. No one knows for sure. That's the whole point of this episode. No one knows for sure. Now, some believe, again, to Dave's point, that these videos are made to do nothing more than generate revenue. From what I found, YouTube makes 45% revenue share from monetized channels. So we have all these channels, thousands and thousands of these Elsagate-related channels, making tons of content. Remember, one gets pulled down, two more pop up. Making tons of content, being seen by combined billions of people. Imagine what 45% of that revenue share equals to YouTube. 
one of the videos I watched while researching this episode was 35 minutes long and featured 13 advertising spots. Spots where kids who don't know any better can click, generating ad revenue for the video creators and YouTube. And while they click, they could be taken anywhere else on YouTube, like someplace outside of YouTube Kids. Now this is where it gets really scary. And we'll talk about those points on the next episode of the Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. You want to save your soul from hell arriving on our range? Cowboy, change your ways today. With us you will ride. Ride that you never turn.